other thing, you really can't go for the first thing at the same time. Because you see, hello and welcome to the stream. I apologize for my earlier sudden departure because of diabetes uh, and hypoglycemia. Um, kids, if, ever, if anyone ever offers you type 2 diabetes, just say no. Okay, so getting back to where we were before, uh, and I guess we found the angle, the, um, wow, okay. Uh, this is actually the magic function, okay. So continuing from where we were before, um, we're now trying to, cr uh, we're now trying to return the amount of umbral eclipse, uh, what portion of a planet, roughly speaking, is totally eclipsed, anywhere from zero to one. And we'd come up with this formula earlier, uh, one half minus the umbral angle minus uh, Q over two ang delta. We know this is going to be zero when there's no eclipse, and this is going to be one when there is a full eclipse or larger than one, which is fine. And again, smaller than zero if there's no eclipse, but that is also fine. Um, we do want to remember the first condition we had up here that I almost forgot. Uh, if PQ is greater than PT, we have to return minus one, but there's another case we're going to do that in as well. Um, so let's go ahead and go back to BC lib here, and this time we're saying, um, uh, okay, we're going to add a condition here to say when we return minus one, or if there is no penumbral eclipse. In other words, if we're at a point where no part of the planet is even partially eclipsed, we're going to return to minus one because we can do a little shortcut using the, because we don't necessarily want to compute the umbral data if there's no uh, penumbral eclipse. There's no point in doing that because we know for a fact we'll be returning uh, no eclipse. Okay, so we went through all this and then we said, okay, here's the number we were returning. Um, okay, and this is a return of minus one if V norm pet number point less than, okay, no eclipse there. And, okay, um, and we're going to go ahead and set this equal to a value, um, plot the pen value. That equal to that. And then uh, what we can do here is say if param equals, because param is the one we said if it's zero, we do this. If param equals equals zero, uh, return pen value. So if param isn't equal to zero, we're now in this case here, param is equal to one. It could be two or three, of course. We haven't really decided all the cases. Um, so over here, if the penumbral point uh, this says there's no penumbral eclipse. Um, and that means if there's no penumbral eclipse, there's no umbral eclipse, so we could return minus one another problem. But also, if we know that, um, gotta be a little bit careful here, param. If param is, le if, um, sorry, not param, if pen value is less than zero, we also know that even if the, uh, can even if the value of param is one, we know there's no eclipse. There's no, not even a penumbral eclipse. So if um, pen value is less than zero, um, I could put in here and n param equals one. I think I will just to be safe. We don't really need this condition because it's, it's going to be implicit anyway. Um, so if we know there's no penumbral eclipse, we return minus one, either because something weirds happened with the penumbral eclipse uh, or because there's no penumbral eclipse because this number is, is too small. Um, and in that case, we say there's no umbral eclipse either. So now, um, the nice thing is uh, we don't have to compute the umbral cone uh, when it's not necessary, when we know that the penumbral cone has already told us there's no eclipse. Uh, however, if that hasn't happened, we do now need to compute the umbral cone. I'm going to see if there's any data I can copy over. Oh, wow, shiny. That is really short. Um, oh, I think that might be because we had the assumption that we were um, we were lined up with the x-axis. Maybe I don't know. That's that's really short. I mean, it'd be nice if the if the code were that short. But let's see what we're doing here. Um, uh, we know PT. Uh, no, we don't know PT. Actually, well, we can compute it. Now, let's see if the PT we have here, now this is where it's going to get a little bit ugly. Um, this is the PT for the penumbral, but for the umbral, it's SR minus TR. So this is where we, we need to be a little bit careful here. 
Um, so now we're going to say compute PT for umbral case reassign because we already have a variable called PT. We're just going to change it now uh, to be ST times TR over, and I realize these numbers don't make sense right now, SR minus TR. Um, actually, I think all of them but ST make sense, and ST, actually that one might make sense too. Yep, it does. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Oh dear. The distance between S and T. Let's see. Well, actually, it's still the distance between S and T. It's not the penumbral vector now. It's the, it's the umbral vector, but still. That still does make sense. Okay. So now to compute the umbral point, we need to go... It's very similar, but we need to go in the other direction. Uh, we need to take T and add negative of the PT that we've... Well, negative of the uh, vector... I'm going to just shut up for a second here and, and see how I did it here, because this is it, basically. Um, with a very minor change, it's this. So we're going to do, th and this time, of course, we're going to call it the umbral point. And I think literally the only difference here is um, is that we change one of these pluses into a minus or something. Um, we don't even need to recompute the umbral vector. It's because it's the same as the penumbral vector. It's the vector that goes from T to S. Um, in either diagram, it doesn't really matter. So we can, we can still do that, and then if we divide it by st, and I th yes, the only difference is instead of being to the right of t, it's going to be to the left of t. So that's our umbral point. And we have our umbral vector. Okay. And then, what's our umbral angle going to be? Wow, this is just really too easy. It's not the same, I hope, because if it is, we've got a problem. SR minus TR over ST. <whistles> really? I mean, it's the arc sign of that, but still, really? The penumbral angle and the umbral angle are identical? I find this hard to believe. But it's not hard to c compute. Um, it's... Um, the arc sine of this, TR over PT. Mm. Why am I suspicious now? Opposite over hypotenuse. And we can also get it as uh, SR over ST plus PT. But wait, this is too easy. TR over PT. Is that true in the other case too, that I could have just done it that way? Um, Wow. All right, let me quickly check to see. So th we are going to be breaking stuff now, of course, uh, but that's that's good. I like doing that. Okay, I don't know what the hell this is. We don't need it, though. Somewhere over here we have the, the penumbral case. That's still the umbral case. Penumbral case! Yay. So the question here is, could we have just... Oh, my God. This is angle U, opposite over... Yeah, this is the hypotenuse. It is just TR over PT. Well, don't I feel dumb. TR, we know. I, I'm pretty sure we computed PT. Uh, PT is the distance from the umbral point to T, penumbral point. And we might need to recompute that here, actually. Um, so the umbral angle, if I can spell it correctly, um, is right right and pt here is different that is the important thing that pt is not the same it's very similar but it's not the same so this this value will be different uh tr over pt okay so that's the angle of the umbra so oh, actually we're going to try to copy as much code as necessary or even use existing variables as necessary uh la la la, la. uh penumbral vector point we have the umbral point. Oh yeah, now we need the, the two angles. Um, so angle Q here, that's going to be the angle between the... Um, penumbral vector. 
I, we could do an e early exit here be if our special condition PT is less than PQ is met, uh, but we'll save it for a sec here. So angle Q is now going to be the angle Q, which is, um, let's go back to here, which is this angle here, the angle between um, PT, or which is the same, this vector, um, and uh, okay, again, this is going to be like negative, because this is the origin. So this is going to be like negative P or something. I think we can use the exact same formula we had before. Uh, so it's V sub C, umbral point, um, and it's actually still the penumbral vector. It's the same vector, the one that goes from S to T. And then delta is, I don't even think we need to change it because that is, um, let's see, V norm C of the... Uh, no, it's, it's because we're going to be using the um, the radius as measured from here, which is a little bit different than the radius that measured from the penumbral point. So th this is a little bit different. So NQ delta equals um, arc sine of QR over V norm C umbral point, not penumbral point. Okay. And the thing we want to... Oh, your mom, I'm missing, a s I'm missing something. I am missing a parentheses. Okay. All right. So the formula we had previously, we'll cut and paste it and then change it to be using the actual variables instead of just made up ones. Um, aha. Did not want to forget that one. Yep. So let me, let me get that back up here. So if PQ, which it, because Q is the origin, uh, if V norm C of um, the umbral point, P, is greater than, uh, what's, oh, we have PT as a, as a number, a solid number. Uh, that's the special case. Now, outside of that special case, what's our magic formula? I even have it called magic formula, magic function. Return, and I've got to be careful here because uh, this is a floating point, and I'm going to go ahead and use 0.5 instead of integer division there, minus the umbral angle, which we said is um, ang. Oh, good, we already have it named that. Minus angle Q over two times angle Q delta. And again, if this works, I will be shocked. Um, uh, mind you, that's true of any of my code. Okay, and uh, again, because I unmounted and remounted, I've got to do this. Alrighty, let's watch it fail. Oh yeah, I've got to do a touch on the BC occultations, otherwise it won't make. Whoa, and I guess we need to do that with a less. This is good, I, I'm totally messing everything up. Alright, BC occultations. It doesn't like 2 times NQ delta because I didn't camel case this one. One more time. BC occultations. Perfect hit. And so now, now I realize what you're going to say, you're going to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, you haven't changed the, the, the code, so how are you going to get this to do uh, something different? Um, and for that matter, where the hell is the code? Where the hell is my history? There we go. Okay. Yeah, that was not what I wanted. At some point, I'm just going to, yeah, let's just do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to look at our, uh, le you know, let's look at solar, e let's see, got to be careful here, total lunar eclipses for the year uh, 2020. And to do that, of course, we will have to, we will have to change BC occultation C. We will have to change the GFQ function. Um and we'll be really clever about it, to point to one. So now we're looking for total eclipses of uh, something by something else. Um, I think we're looking for total eclipses of moon ID by planet ID, with sun ID being the, uh, the, the generator of light. Okay. So I do need to do a remake there. Touch. I don't even need to do a touch here because we just changed it. Okay. 
And because I always forget what it is, let's, let's just actually look at it. Okay, so if you're on the moon, the sun's light source, the planet Earth is going to be shadowing you, and the year is 2020. And there might not have been total lunar eclipse. Okay, over there. Now I'm getting suspicious. All right, hang on. Um, still called penumbral data. Let's go put a zero in here and see what happens. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I wonder if there's a way to touch something if it's... older than something else. That probably made no sense. Okay. Okay, good. So these are going to be, I think, partial lunar eclipses. I, w I would hope. And I want to make sure that the second one here is not the same as the first one, and the third one here is not the same as the first one, unless I might have broken things here. So, well, these look like they're very different dates. Uh, January 10th, June 5th, July 5th. So which, whichever one we happen to have up here, which probably more than one right now, um, Penumbra Lunar Eclipse. Um, yes, not interesting. Still not interesting. Not a lunar eclipse, not a lunar eclipse. I'm trying to clean up a little bit here as we go along. Total solar eclipse, what an astronomical unit is, the answer I once gave to something, uh, this is just an image, um, how to pass something, 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 and over here, so we will go for the, um, wow, May 26th is the first total uh, lunar eclipse, blood moon, <laughs> yeah, let's call it that, uh, May 26th, 2021, <coughs> excuse me. And that might be this one here. No, it's not. It's the one after that one. Okay. So let's go ahead and... So why, why is this not working? I don't know. Um, oh, right, right. So it's working with zero. Now if we put a one in here... Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so if we put a one in here... and run it, we get nothing. Or at least we did last time. Maybe it will be... Okay, good. Ish. So why is that important? Um, because over here... Let's see. Oh, 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 there's a... I know what's wrong. Um, oh, no. We should... Pram is run. We should go past here. Um... If pen value is less than zero and param equals one, return minus one. So the cases we're interested in are when we get over here. Um, possible umbral eclipse. So this should be very spammy if I've done it correctly. And if it's not, something's very wrong. Okay, hang on. Okay, so we do occasionally reach this possible umbral case. Um, the nice thing here is we can actually get like the, we know what the penumbral stuff is here. Um, so that's the point. This is, we say that it's to the west of T. I guess we want, well, huh. and it has length PT, which is fine. Um, I guess what we want to print out here is, um, well, pretty much the same stuff we printed out here. Let's see if we can get all that crap. Um, there might be more stuff we want to print out, but let's go ahead. And let's go ahead... Oh, you know what? Let's see if we ever reach this point. Um, because it might be that this uh, condition that we're checking is either backwards or incorrect or something. All right. So let's see if we ever get to this point. And if we do, then we know the problem is... Well, it's, it's a better problem in the sense that it might be easier to solve. Okay, so that's where we're having a little bit of an issue there. Do I have the signs flipped? 
if the umbral point the distance from Q to the umbral point is greater than PT hmm yeah then you should not be able to have an eclipse Well, okay, so then we know that it is, uh, what happens if we comment this out? Um, at this point, we should be seeing like some really weird stuff, but if this works, then clearly I've made a mistake in the, um, in that calculation. Dun, 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 nothing. Okay, so, wait. Um, Hmm. All right. Let's let's check something here. We're looking for when it is greater than zero. Let's make sure I've got my uh, parameters correct. I'm sure I do because yeah, I do because it's a lunar eclipse. That's what we're looking at. <coughs> okay. Well, we could wait to see where it's less than one. Um, not crazy about that, but let's see what that does. Um, let's see if we get closer to actually getting an answer. Aha, uh -huh, we do get one. And it's going to turn out to be the, the frickin' Oh, let's see. Okay, and these are not real values. These are basically because these are the beginning and end times of the uh, of the interval. So something is wrong here. Uh, I guess we want it when it is uh, greater than zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to know when it's greater than zero. So let's see what the hell we're actually returning here. And why the hell it is never less than, um, why it's never greater than zero? Seems fairly basic there. Dun, 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 dun. Right. Minus 160, okay, that's, those are pretty big numbers. Wow. Just wow. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Well. Um. That is wild. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and um, do another printf. Q delta. And I'm going to cheat here and, and turn these all into degrees. Um, N times it's in degrees, so it's in radians, so degrees per radian. We'll change it back. Um, angle Q. And angle Q delta. I don't know where we're getting these insane values, but oh, you know what? I think I, I have a clue here. It might be that I'm not doing the uh, the mod 2 pi thing that I'm really supposed to do and, and never actually get around to doing. Uh, in other words, we might be getting angles that are bigger than 360 or uh, somehow in that. Uh, okay, umbrella angle 89 degrees. Angle Q, angle, these seem correct. I mean, from the moon, the Earth is about 1.5 degrees. Um, well, actually, sorry, that's not what I meant. Uh, the, the angle Q delta seems about right. It seems a little small, actually, but okay. Um, um, so let's see, angle Q, very, very small. Umbral angle, umbral angle is huge, though. Should it be that big? I mean... Uh, that 
seems very strange. The other one was like 89 degrees consistently. I guess we should probably put an ET in front of all this crap so we know when this is happening. Um, or a Unix time, actually. And that's just going to be e ET, phone, home to Unix, ET, comma, this. Uh, let's see all this is happening. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a Unix timestamp, because it looks like this is all happening in a very small interval of time. Friday, January the 10th, 2020, which is, I think, uh, oh, just seven days from now, by the way, um, if, you're, if you're into that. Yeah, so this is happening during this lunar eclipse here, which is a penumbral eclipse. So at the very least, we know that, the, um, that it is penumbral, so we do get something out of it. So let's see what's going on here. You know, the umbrella angle is 89. That seems really insanely large, though. Let's see what we're looking at here. So that says, this is Earth, by the way. This is the sun, this is the moon. I know, not to, not to scale. So it's saying here that the umbrella angle is like way out here, 90 degrees. But I mean, we're still getting hit. <laughs> Should I get into the moon's shadow? Um, angle Q. The umbral point and the umbral vector. And that is, that's equal to, um, about 1.5 degrees, which seems reasonable. Well, actually it doesn't because we're being weird here. All right. Okay, so... We're going to cheat again. And we're going to cheat by creating this um, this matrix again. Uh, oh yeah, what the hell? If we're going to cheat, let's do it correctly. All right, so we'll print out all this crap too. Um, and actually, this might help us see what's wrong, even without looking at the umbral stuff. So let's just go ahead and do this, or it might just confuse the hell out of us. Either way, it, it's good with me. So let's see, users in chat. Oh, hello, people who have come into chat, assuming you're real. Or even if you're not, hello. I don't mind talking to, uh, to bots. Okay. Okay, the only problem here is we don't want to print this all the time. We only want to print this, all this crap, if, um, if, we're in the se if we're in the case where we definitely have a penumbral eclipse at least going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, going to cut and paste it like this. We're going to comment it out here. But we will leave the computations. Only the printing is going to be commented out. And then we will put this all this crap here um, where, we, where we are in the case, the special case that is being weird to us. Okay. Alrighty. Why is Unix time? Unix time should be... Oh, it is right. No, no, no. Unix time should be right at the top. It should be the header. And I realize that remaking a program for something that this trivial, very bad. I don't care, though. Okay, S temp, T temp. Um, PU vector, T pause, S pause. I guess we don't necessarily care about all of this stuff. We want... Um, Penumbral angle is 0.27. Yeah, maybe all of this stuff is a little bit too much. Let's um, let's do it on sort of an as-needed basis. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this. And I think this is just going to show us what we... Oh, okay, hang on. Why are you unhappy? 
Oh. But one time I decide to use a new line in my code, it gets caught if I don't forget to comment it out. Woohoo! I suck. Okay. Alright, um... So in this case, the target is the moon. Um, yeah, the observer is the moon. So we have here uh, T temp and S temp are to the right. That th that's good. Um, the lengths are. It's a little bit strange that this length looks very much like the uh, radius of the Earth. Uh, in fact, dangerously close to the radius of Earth, so I'm not happy. I just don't believe that it's going to be that. Um, yep. I'm pretty sure one of these numbers is incorrect. I'm pretty sure this is SR minus TR here. Um, but let's, let's make sure. Yep, that's what's wrong. ST times TR over SR minus TR, not... That that's that's what's going on there. All right, let's see if that helps. Actually, I don't even know what we're looking for now. Um, returning eight ninety, returning eight ninety one. That is, I think, deep eclipse. Yeah, it is deep eclipse. So we're good. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and let's go. I'm going to push this to Git since it's kind of sort of working. And um, I like pushing things to Git. And by the way, Git is just a guy I know who's not very bright. Sort of, sort of annoying, I guess. I don't know what the British definition of Git is. I guess it would be an annoying person. Anyway, over that blabber, I went ahead and pushed stuff. All right, let's see. We're going to go ahead and get rid of this. At some point, we might get rid of all these debugging statements. Okay, and then I would like to. We don't even need this anymore. And I would like to put back that, ooh, shiny. Um, I would like to put back that test about um, if, if we're the wrong sort of quadrant for that. Okay. Um, let's rock and roll. Okay. Ooh. Me likey. Which is something I should never, a grown man should never be saying. All right. Uh, 1709 to 2110. That doesn't look correct, but it is certainly better than what we've been getting before. Um, this is the 10th. Yeah, 1709 to 12, 2110. Interesting. Um, oh, hang on, we do have these time. 1709. Mm, penumbra eclipse begins, penumbra eclipse ends. Uh, not what we asked for, but, you know, I mean... Did I forget to change the parameter? No, I didn't. This is correct. Um, okay. I'm going to just go with it for right now. Um... Hmm. <laughs> um, let's see what this one is. Is this the one that is actually total? I think this is the last one before the one that's total. November 30th. Let's see if this... Uh, November 30th. Here. Yeah. Might see a darker full moon during the maximum phase. Notice that there's no actual eclipse of the moon. It's just a darker because the Earth's umbra doesn't quite touch the moon, uh, which means we shouldn't be reporting it here, which is, so I'm kind of unhappy. 734 to 1151. And we're getting the times right. <laughs> At least there's that. Um, but we're getting the wrong kind of uh, function feature going on here. And I don't think I know why, but let's see what this does. So this is an actual total eclipse, May 26th. Um, yeah, total lunar eclipse. This is this is the one where we actually wanted to 
to get a result. And we want to get the result 11.11 um, 11 to 11.25. We're getting 8.50, 8.48 right there to 13.40, right there. So we're still getting the penumbral stuff, not the umbral stuff. So let's see what that is. Okay, so if V norm is, I want to be careful here. Um, wow, let's see. Okay, I, I think maybe we, we forgot the point where we actually return a value. Um, if V norm is spice double, Number vector. Okay. I think we missed a key step. Oh, here it is. So this is the pen value. The parameter is zero. We just return it. The parameter is not zero, but the pen value is less than zero. We return minus one. Um, so here we know we're in a penumbral eclipse, which is good. I mean, we have that going for us. Um, so I guess we can print some of this crap out again. Uh, since it is all, all kind of, um, it's all been, it's all been rotated so that we can see things really easily. Might as well use the debugging that we've created. Okay. So S temp, T temp, and Q is always zero, zero, zero. So this certainly looks okay. I mean, this is this is the case where we would have an umbral potential umbral eclipse. Uh, let's see where the umbral point ends up being. Mm. And we would expect that to be. I don't know where the hell we'd expect it to be. We'd expect it to be the to the left of um, to the left of where the Earth is, because the well the left of where the right edge of the Earth is, because we do want we, we're saying that it's getting into the into the umbra. So let's see what this does. The umbral point is nicely far away. Gorgeous where that is. Um, no, it's not. We need to rotate the umbral point as well. Because that is oh, and that we have to do somewhere over here because we compute the umbral points d differently. Okay, so let's see how we did this up here. Spice double umb temp, not penumbral, um temp three. Apply the matrix to the umbral vector. Wait, 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 wait. To the umbral point. So this should be umbral point temp. To the to the transformation after we've done the uh, rotation. Okay. And so here we need to say um pt temp. Well, really? Hang on. Oh man, that's a horrible variable name. Okay, so now this will say where the umbral vector is after the rotation that puts everything into the xy plane. Assuming I didn't make any mistakes, which, wow, I didn't. I'm impressed. Okay. So the umbral point... Okay, some neighbor spoofing coming in there. So the umbral point is correctly at the right Y location. It is negative 888, so it's way to the left of um, the Earth. Sorry, the moon. The moon is the thing that we're getting, uh, is getting shadowed. Okay, so that's all good. Um, now, did I miss like a pi over two minus kind of dealy here? I mean, I couldn't because we're, we're still getting penumbral eclipses. 
Ooh, but that might mean we're... Yeesh, might even mean we're in the Anti-Umbra. Um, which is still in the Penumbra, but... Okay, um... So good, good, Umbra point is way to the left of the moon. Um, and I guess now I want to know what the Umbra... I guess I want to know what some of this other stuff is now. Um... Let's see what the penumbral angle... Let's see what the... Uh, okay, so... And so I just want to know the um, angle between the moon and New York City. <laughs> no. Um, all right, so this is the penumbral point. The moon is at zero, 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 which we'll put it right here. Beautifully inside the cone. Uh, right, because t pause is... Uh, T-tap is this. Yeah, this is gorgeous. It's right within the cone there. Um, and it's very close to the origin, because zero, zero, zero. It's beautiful. Um, so it's right here. Well, actually, it's going to be right here, roughly. Um, and then we want to know its angle from P. And to do that, we get this vector here going from S to T. And then negative p. Oh, there might be a there might be an issue here. Because that's two p, and this is there might be an issue here. Let's let's go ahead and print the angle. Um, that's angle q. Okay. And we will go ahead and com convert it from. This is radians, degrees per radians. We'll convert it back to degrees. And I think we need to do a pi minus 2 on our angle Q. I think it's, we w it's, the r it's the supplementary angle of the one we want to go back to uh, high school geometry. Um, yep. Angle Q, 179, 179. Oh, no, wait, that actually might be the right angle, the correct angle. Because at this point, we're not in the total eclipse yet. So at some point, this is going to flip over from 179 to be like a very low number. Or it won't. Mm. All right, let's just make this a bit easier. Hmm. think we need to do a pi minus that. Uh, last time we had two negatives that canceled out. In this case, uh, we do not. So I think we do need to do this. Um, now, the, th the problem is that seems like it's going to make things worse, not better. Uh, uh, but who knows? All right, let's see what this does. Okay, good, nice. Oh, we don't want to necessarily grep for ang Q now. Nice, nice small angle there. Um, so I guess we might want to start flagging our output because we have so much debugging stuff going on. So over here we will say output. So we can flag it. Alrighty. Now let's take a look at our output. That's interesting. We got a lot less than we did before, which is hopefully a good sign. Let me even round this up. Uh, no, we're still getting January 10th, though, uh, when we know there's no uh, total lunar eclipse there. So, well, let's just see where th if we're getting the same bad times that we were before. 1709. Oh. That's not even close to correct. Um, I mean, what the hell happens on May 16th, 2022? Seriously? I mean, seriously? Yeah, that's not even... That's just stupid. Oh, well, I guess it is technically this lunar eclipse. So it goes from one lunar eclipse to the other. 
it somehow misses the, the end of, of a lunar eclipse. That's not, that's funny. Um, okay, and I, I'm going to pretend it's because our interval is too big here. I don't think that's the real problem, though. This is going to slow down the pro program a lot, but I don't think it's going to make it any more accurate. So that's always good when you can slow down your program and still have it fail. Very, very nice thing to, 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 to want. And I've slowed it down by a factor of 60, roughly speaking, although I think there are some optimizations going on there that... Um, actually, maybe it's more than 60. Maybe there's some anti-optimization going on. Yeah, this was a brilliant move on my part. We'll give this a few more seconds, then we'll bump it up to like 600 seconds or something. And your time is up. Let's go ahead and make the 600 seconds. And hopefully we'll get a slightly better answer. And it'll only take us a little bit longer than before. Well, six times longer than before. Alrighty. It does not look like things are going well. Because it looks like this interval is huge. And it is. Okay, so this wasn't the problem. So we're turning to that. Okay, um, let's see what's going on here. Um, Mm. See, the temptation here is, I guess I'll print the uh, the delta as well, but mm. let's print this over here, and we'll print the ang delta, um, and let's be nice and just print it on its own line here instead, delta. It's ang q delta, I believe, is what we're calling it. Okay, and this time we're going to actually look at every. We're going to look at all the lines, not just the ones that are okay. Angle Q delta undeclared, because I abbreviate here just to make myself annoyed. Okay, nothing. It's good. Nope, 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 nope. We want a less than here. Okay, the angle is about half a degree. Delta is about 0.1. Uh, the umbral point is here. And the angle Q makes with the umbral point uh, compared to this vector here um, is presumably 0.5 degrees. And I guess we need the umbral angle now to, to actually get all of this put together here. Um, the umbral angle, which is conveniently named um ang. Okay. And I do not need to translate that because it's an angle. I do not need to uh, put a matrix around it. Okay, so this does. Umbral point, umbral angle, um ang is point two. So we're not quite there yet. So here, um, angle Q minus angle delta is 0.3. Uh, we should not be returning this as a time interval. Um, so here, we still should be returning numbers that are bigger, uh, that are less than zero, because we still have the case where um, the umbral angle is still too small to, to, to hold this in any capacity. Uh, so it might be nice to know what the hell we're returning. Why don't we, um... Why am I... Am I off by a... thingy? Oh well, never mind. I think I'm off by a tab, but that's not going to affect how this works. Alright, let's rock and roll. Returning 1.85, that's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, returning, returning, returning. 1.982, still good, still good. We're still not fully eclipsed. 
Um, yeah, this could get tedious unless we have a way of. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's see what we're looking for. We're looking for greater than. Oh, what? Greater than zero. Well, we no, we're not. Um. Oh, wait a minute. No, we should not be running a number this big. Okay, back, 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 Simba, back. I don't know who Simba is. Someone should find out. Um, okay, this is not the right thing to be returning. Um, because angle Q minus angle delta... Still bigger than the... You're not in the umbra yet. Dude, what the hell are you doing, man? You're killing me. Um... I mean, this seems like it's the correct formula. So, umbral angle minus angle Q. We'll just do this part first. Uh, minus 0.25. Ooh. That's not good. Do I need an absolute value around that? <gasps> oh, do I need an absolute value around angle Q? No, angle Q is already positive. Um, well, what the hell did I get, how the hell did I get to this formula? It did seem correct, so let's go ahead and look at our magic formula here. Um. So let's just put that all over one. Ah, uh, okay. So, somewhere in here I lost an absolute value sign, I think. Uh, for angle Q. Yep, it's the absolute angle Q. Okay. If angle Q is the umbral angle plus angle delta, umbral angle plus delta, 0.3, so it's bigger than that, then it should be zero, uh, meaning no eclipse. If it is umbral angle minus angle delta, 0.1, it is one. And I suspect, I suspect something is wrong here. Um, now, I mean, this makes sense. The, um, the smaller the, the absolute value of angle Q is, the bigger the number we should be, the more of an eclipse we have. So the question is, um, angle Q minus angle delta, which is, I mean, we could flip these around to get that. So the umbral angle plus, the umbral angle is 0.2 degrees, the delta is, so we go up to 0.3 and still return an, an eclipse, but we're not there. Well, uh, 0.3, and angle Q is point way too big though. So what be happening? Um, yeah, let's figure that out. Okay. Go ahead and put this over here. Put it in minus 0.5 minus... Uh, sorry, we'll actually do this the other way. Um, umbral angle minus angle Q. Already I'm suspicious that there's something wrong here. But let's proceed. So that number is going to be negative, which I don't think it should be. And then what? Um, over two angle Q delta. Oops. Remember to parenthesize. And angle Q delta is this thing. So I, I already see that something I don't like here. Oh. And then it's 0.5 minus all that. And that's where we get the big number. Okay. So what I'm not liking here is... Um, hmm. 
the idea is we want to measure the distance of angle Q from the umbral angle. And I'm almost sure that we want, therefore, to do an absolute value on that. So um, right there, I, I'm almost sure we want that to be the, uh, the distance between the umbral angle and angle Q, uh, not an actual subtraction. So I think that's where we're going to need our absolute value. And if I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Except let's go over here. Okay. Now it's returning some reasonable values. Getting down there, getting down there, getting down there. Come on, baby needs a new pair of... Baby doesn't need anything. Wait. Do we never get down to zero now? All right. Let's just see what this output is now for this one. Dun, 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 dun. Still not looking great. Uh, because now it looks like we have eclipses that last only a few seconds. But who knows. So according to this, the eclipse lasts from... Yep. Wait. that's That doesn't make sense. Stand by. Ooh. Could that be correct? Let's find out. So this is the... So it's good that it skipped over the... You know, first result is the May 26th eclipse. Good. Now let's see if it gives us the right time for the, the um, beginning and ending of the uh, phases. So it starts at 946, it says. Oh, this is good, actually. That's when the partial eclipse begins. And 1252 is when it ends, and we're saying 12. That is gorgeous. So this is working correctly for um, partial eclipses, which is actually what we were sort of looking at, um, because we had this number set to uh, greater than zero. Um, in this program here, we said greater than zero. If we wanted to look at um, total eclipses, this would be a one here. And we'll do that in just a second. I just want to see if the um, this other one is correct. And if it is, I think we, we've, we've nailed this. So f November 19th, 720, so that, is that the next total eclipse? Of the, sorry, partial eclipse of the moon. It is. It is partial. Um, partial begins at 718, good. And the 10, we want to attend to 1045, it ends at 1047. Beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and push this to Git because it's almost working. And away it goes. Now, let's look for the complete darkness of the moon. This should only print out uh, total lunar eclipses and should only tell us when the, the eclipse itself is total, in fact. Damn, we're so close. Hmm. All right. Well, there's a way. There's a way around this. Um, yeah. Let's 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 see what the word let's see what returning does here. I mean, technically, I don't even know if we need to remake this. Um, returning. 1.13 Okay, going up again. We know it returns values that are less than 1 uh, because um, that's how we that's how we were, were looking for we were earlier looking for values that were uh, sorry, we know that it returns values that are greater less than 0 because wait. Wait, 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 wait. Um, so according to this, we have a, um, a total lunar eclipse right at the beginning of this interval here. Um, so why does that not get returned like that? Are we on the flip side of it or something? I mean, like in the penumbral part of it? 
Um, I mean, I guess it is greater than one, and we did say return, um, find when it's greater than one, greater than zero, rather. Um, but when I put a one here, I don't get any results, but this is clearly returning something bigger than one. All right, I'm confused. Let's see what this does. Okay, no output, but return value here is greater than one. So what's wrong? Um, what's well not going to be wrong over here? It's going to be wrong over here. We did our test here for, um, yeah, we did this test, so we're fine. And I don't know why the hell we have this indentation going like this, but let's fix that real quick. And here we say we're going to return this value. The only thing I'm thinking is maybe it never gets below one or something, so it doesn't ever. Um, it doesn't ever get out of the eclipse. That's very strange, though. All right, one point. Okay, hang on. We had a little bit of a. Okay, yeah, there it is. Plenty of times when it's going to be saying, um, okay, so we haven't quite left the eclipse yet. Hmm. So have I accidentally made this so that, uh, it can never return? Oh, hang on. There it is. We're definitely out of the eclipse now. Alrighty, I'm confused. Let's see something here. Okay. So this means we're, we're in a full eclipse, that's fine. Okay. So at Unix time this, May 26th of 1022, we are saying that we have slipped from a um, from a full eclipse to a partial eclipse. Uh, sorry, a total eclipse, but only on part of the target. So we, it's 1022 on May 26th. It's, uh, it'll be nice if I opened up new tabs for these, but I'm not going to. So let's see what this says here. Hmm. So 1022. And the, the problem here is maybe we're skipping by too much time, which is what I thought was a problem earlier. So at night between 922 and 1022. Um which this is, we slip from being in total eclipse which just seems wrong, that doesn't seem right, um, to being in partial eclipse. Okay. Then we stay that like that for partial eclipse. And then we get back, so I think I've got something reversed. I've got a minus sign reversed or something. Um, then we stay in that for quite a while. And then we get out of it at 1322, between 1222 and 1322. And that is when the partial eclipse ends. Um, so this is backwards. This is backwards. Um, because in here, somewhere in here we should have a total eclipse. But I think we did, and I just kind of didn't really look at it. Um, there it is. Um, but that should actually be, 
Yeah, I've got my signs flipped or something. Uh, big time. Big time, big time. Um, and I think maybe it's literally just the flip of... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I am now not no longer printing when I'm returning. I'll, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so that, that was a big mistake on my part there. Okay. Returning negative meaning no eclipse. Um... Okay, like seriously no eclipse. Uh, then back to no eclipse, and then back to, um... Yep, something's wrong. I think I've got my, my test exactly flipped. Or something like that. Okay. Alright guys, we've been going for about an hour. Uh, kinda wanna stay longer, but I don't think I can. Uh, sadly, there is other life stuff I sometimes do. I might come back later today, I might not. Uh, and when I, if I do, we'll continue with this. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.